<laughs> thank, thank you for having me here tonight. It's really an honor to be at the um, Army Navy Club. One of my favorite places to go. The library here is amazing. Uh, it's one of the oldest libraries in Washington, D.C. Um, but the club and what I do is, is sort of intertwined. It's about preserving the, uh, the stories of veterans. And in college, right after college in 1992, I started interviewing World War II veterans. And I've done about 3,000 interviews with World War II veterans, as well as veterans from World War I all the way through Korea, Afghanistan, and Iraq. And um, you mentioned we were one. I was actually embedded in a Marine platoon in, 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 in Iraq with, uh, in the Battle of Fallujah. But it was always about the veteran stories. And the Brenner assignment is one of the most amazing stories that I ever came across. Um, I was working on my third book called Operative Spies and Saboteurs, which is an oral history of the OSS. And when I was doing that, I would go to the National Archives to find research on the book. And the National Archives has about three cubic miles of records. And inside the, the archives, it's like drilling for oil. You don't know if you're going to find uh, if you're going to find oil or if you're going to find a dry hole. And I was going through box after box after box. And one day, I found something called the Tacoma Mission. And it was this dusty old file that had rusted staples on it. And I turned to the Tacoma Mission, and it was page 16. I think I flipped through it, and it talked about how an OSS agent was suddenly surrounded by German soldiers. And he was being taken back to a POW cage. And in the process of being taken back, he didn't want to go willingly. So out of his pocket, he pulled a Stinger pen, which was actually a ballpoint pen that was 22 caliber pistol. And he aimed it at the guard. And the guard <laughs> was stunned, didn't believe him at all, and actually raised his rifle and at that very same moment, that OSS operative ran like a racehorse and went towards a barn. And the back of his calf was grazed by this German NCO's bullet from a Mauser. And that story completely captivated me. I wanted to know more about that individual. And his name was Howard Chappell. And he became sort of an obsession, in a sense, to try to find who he was in a sense, and then also to get his story. And for the next six years, I would try to interview Howard Chappell, but I would always get the same line, well, you know, you really need to come out here, and we're sorry, you know, I, I really can't talk to you about it. And it was like so many of the OSS veterans, they maintained their vows of silence. And it, it was even worse than that. He had never talked about the war, even to his family. So um, this mission, became of real interest to me. But it was only the um, sort of the tip of the iceberg, in a sense, because this book is about two missions that are combined together, two stories that are combined together, which creates an entire almost world. For me, this is the most complex book I ever wrote. Um, at times, I didn't even know if I could write it. It, it took seven years of research, literally 10,000 documents. I have about 10 or 11 of these things at home. These are declassified documents that, were, that came from various archives around the world, the National Archives, the German Archives, the Italian Archives. And I literally devoured this stuff for a year and read it and let it sit and, and, and tried to absorb it and came around the story. And, um, but the key was actually trying to find Chapel and getting, getting him to interview him. And um, his, uh, the, the key to that story was a, a gentleman who was the spy handler of, the two, of these two missions, Howard Chapel's mission, and then another individual who I'm going to talk to about in a second, Stephen Hall. And that person was um, Albert Materazzi. His nickname during the war was The Brain because he was the spy. Um, he was effectively the case officer that handled these two missions. And his entire basement was filled, you know, up to about a year. It's still there. 
of thousands, tens of thousands of these documents, and he became, he was an amazing man, but he got Chapel to talk to me. And it was uh, four, three, or, three or four years ago, I asked uh, Albert if, I, I thought, I said to him, I'm thinking about going back to Iraq. He said, no, you need to talk to Howard. And he got Howard to talk to me. And that is an entire story in itself, getting Howard to talk. Um, go, digressing to the second mission, though, what this whole Brenner assignment is about is that in World War II, there's an area called the Brenner Pass. It still exists to this day, and it's the main thoroughfare where there's highways and railroads, where Germany's, in World War II, main supplies came through this pass. And throughout the war, the Allies constantly tried to bomb it into destruction, but they were unsuccessful. So the story begins actually in 1938, where you have a man that's an Andover graduate that drops out of Harvard and Yale and decides to join the U.S. Army as a private. But in 1938, he skied. He was a wealthy individual. He skied at, at, at Cortina, Italy, near the Brenner Pass, and decided when the war broke out that this supply line could potentially be cut. So fast forward a little bit after, as, as he was a private. He then becomes an officer, but he continues to formulate this plan that if you drop me behind the lines by parachute with a pack of explosives, I can destroy the sub-passes that lead into the Brenner. And in 1944, after the Allies invade Italy, and um, Hall is on a train uh, from training as an engineer back from the, from the East Coast to Oregon, he pens a letter that says to the OSS, if you drop me behind the lines, I can accomplish all these things. And uh, you know what's, what's kind of remarkable is that train line still exists to this day. It's called the Empire Builder, and it, it runs from Chicago all the way to Seattle or Oregon. And on that, that long train ride, Hall wrote a letter that changed his entire fate and destiny. And the OSS, just back up for a second, is effectively the first CIA or Central Intelligence Agency, but it was far more than that during World War II. It was also the first special operations groups. Um, they dealt with propaganda. They also dealt with research and analysis, which took all the human intelligence that was out there and collated it and then analyzed it. And it was sort of a an entire an agency that had everything under one umbrella, which in many ways the Brenner assignment as well as is what's going on today are still there it's a very back to the future problem. Um, we're dealing with human intelligence issues and everything else, and a lot of people have advocated a need for an OSS again. But Hall joins this agency and goes through spy training and is given the opportunity to form his own team. And he forms a small team of about four men, and they jump back behind the lines into northern Italy to sever the pass, or the small passes that lead up to the pass. But everything begins to go wrong, even from the start. Hall's given sort of his own mission called Operation Mercury. He's gone in to, to try to sever these passes, and then there's another submission attached to him. He's not given a radio operator, and he sets off on his own in really one of the great epic adventure stories of World War II. He's climbing mountains. He's cross-country skiing. Um, he's, during this whole time, avoiding the SS, who's constantly hunting him and the other partisans in the area. But he begins to grow sort of a partisan movement, and he blows things up. It's incredible. There's... The reason why I was able to, to capture so much detail is that Stephen Hall did sort of the historian's dream. He illegally kept a diary on cigarette paper and, and recorded daily entries of what he did. Everything from eating like polenta with the natives to showing people how to, to, to ride a motorcycle to blowing up bridges um, to avo and avoiding the SS. 